What is up, YouTube? It's been well over a year since I've been able to make a video, thanks in part to the perpetual planetary lockdowns. It's been so long, in fact, that most of you probably thought I was dead. Unfortunately, that is false. So with things beginning to open up in Italy for the summer, I thought I would take advantage of the opportunity to go explore the Church of Santa Maria del Fiore in the city of Florence. It's a massive cathedral with a beautiful exterior and a lot of stairs. Hope you enjoy. The Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore is one of the most popular tourist destinations in all of Florence. Its construction began in 1296 atop the ruins of a much older cathedral dedicated to St. Reparata, and it was finally completed in the year 1436 when the finishing touches were added to its massive brick dome, which even today is the largest dome of its kind ever built. The exterior of the cathedral is richly embellished with green and pink marble panels, and it presently features a 19th century Gothic facade designed by Emilio de Fabris. Displayed proudly on this facade are statues of the Twelve Apostles, with the Mother of God in the middle of them, as well as various scenes from the life of Mary. As you continue to admire the centuries of dedication that must surely have gone into the creation of this lavish exterior, you may take notice of a pair of open side doors. Through these doors, you will find a stairwell leading all the way to the very top of the church's massive dome. It's approximately 463 steps to reach the top, so I wouldn't recommend it to anyone who's out of shape. You will be given a breather about halfway up, though, along with a chance to view a stunning representation of the Last Judgment, painted on the underside of the dome you are just about to enter. Continuing your ascent, you will find an occasional window that can help you track your progress, one of which will treat you to a sneak peek of my next destination, Santa Maria Novella. The stairs become increasingly difficult to navigate as you approach the end of your trek, until you finally emerge to one of the most spectacular views in all of Italy. On a clear day, the entire city can be seen from this vantage point, and even some of the countryside beyond. After a while, you may find yourself reluctant to leave this view behind, but when you do decide to make the long journey back down, there is an alternate path you might take, which will bring you out onto the terraces about halfway down. The views are still amazing from this height, and it's worth getting an up-close and personal look at the cathedral's upper exterior. As you wind your way along the narrow pathway, you'll notice a few interesting designs that can only be seen from one particular spot. Once you make your way back down to the ground, you will immediately notice the peculiar lack of embellishment on the inside of the church. At first glance, you might think the designers just ran out of money, but this was actually done intentionally. The vast, empty space and relative simplicity of the interior is meant to evoke a sense of religious austerity, as practiced by the Dominican friars of that time. As austere as it might be, however, it is not entirely devoid of embellishment, as it does feature many artistic works from the likes of Donatello and Brunicelli, among others. 
if you still have energy after climbing a total of 926 steps to get both up and back down the massive dome, then you might consider climbing the additional 414 steps to reach the top of Giotto's bell tower adjacent to the main cathedral. Structurally, it's very similar to the Campanile I explored in Venice a couple years ago, except there's no elevator in this one. The journey to the top is divided into five separate stages, with each one bringing you to a landing where you can take pictures and soak in the view. I was admittedly less impressed with the views here, mostly because they were largely blocked by the protective metal fencing. That being said, it was a great way to pass the time while I waited for the opening of my final stop of the day, the Opera del Duomo Museum. It didn't look like much from the outside, and I expected to be underwhelmed by the exhibits inside. But to my surprise, the museum actually had a fair amount of worthwhile displays to take in. Most abundantly, it contained a plethora of statues that were a part of the church's facade at one point. Adjacent to these statues were multiple sets of golden and bronze doors that had once marked the entrance to the ancient baptistry associated with the church, which was off-limits to the public at the time of this recording. As I continued to wind my way through this maze-like museum, I came across many stunning works of art and rich pieces of history, and I was thoroughly impressed by all of them. At the end of the day, I am fortunate, I think, to have witnessed even this small glimpse of Christian culture, as it was so many centuries ago. In a world where history is so easily forgotten and erased, it's monuments like these that remind us where we came from and inform us of where we are going. The simple fact of the matter is that a culture which forgets history will not be remembered by it. <laughs>